Hi everybody, how's it going? Welcome back to Broken Sword 2 The Smoking Mirror. The last episode was absolutely fantastic. What an incredible opening to a game and I just can't wait to see where this goes from here. The standard has been set right at the very top. We managed to escape from a poisonous spider and put out a fire uh, and nico has been kidnapped as well and it all seems to revolve around this sort of Mayan artifact from what George was saying uh, but we've got the phone here and we've got um, Lobino's number I believe on something around here so I guess we'll probably start by trying to call him. Much as I disliked him, Lobino might be my only hope of finding Nico. Hi, Andre. Who is this? It's George Stobart, Nico's boyfriend. Don't you mean ex-boyfriend? <laughs> Why no, did he have to... I didn't call you just to pick a fight. I need to talk to you about Nico. Can't you accept she's just not interested in you? Listen, Andre, we need to talk. Nico's life depends on it. Okay. You remember the cafe at Montfaucon? Sure. Wow, that was abrupt. Andre? You'd better show, you creep. I felt an irrational urge to wipe my ear. <laughs> God, he really doesn't like him, does he? Alright, well, I guess we know where we're going then. Anything through here, actually, while we're here? It was locked. Uh, yeah, but we do have a key, don't we? Yeah, I wonder if we can... house key didn't fit this lock. Right, okay. Maybe it fits this door then, it's just a way out. Also, with that phone call thing, maybe if any of you guys are watching from America, you could um, confirm the something to me. Locked. I didn't Be fancy my chances of kicking this door down. Because whenever I watch like TV shows and movies set in America, no one ever says goodbye when they end a phone call. They literally just like say whatever it was they're saying and then just like disconnect the call is that a real thing in america because here in the uk that is like considered incredibly rude and you have to like say bye about five times before <laughs> the phone call ends i don't know let me know in the comments below is i've i've always wondered if it's something that forward to meeting Labano again but he was my only link with nico yeah i've always wondered if it's something that's made up for movies and tv shows but anyway back to the the topic at hand i'm getting slightly off track I decided to order a coffee and wait for him. It's cool to be back here again. What happened the last time we ordered a coffee outside a cafe in Paris? Nothing good, that much is for sure. Um, let's have a look at the diet. Oh, God, okay. There's a lot, um, lot put on here. Yeah, the Mayan stone. Um, okay, so no, there's nothing. I guess, who's this guy? Man. All right, man. Pardon me. But don't I know you? Huh? You were here the, the day I found the catacombs. I was? Ah, yes. I remember you. Yeah. Are you still in the police force? Oh, it's him. No, not anymore. I'm a man of leisure. And what brings you back to Paris? Uh, well, we can say either. My girlfriend. Ah, what it is to be young. And I mean, technically, she's not your girlfriend sure, anymore, George. Hey, listen... I'd love to, but I need to keep a clear head, so my company isn't good enough for you. Uh, well, we've got lots we can... Who is that? Is that the guy? Let's, let's ask about some of this stuff. Oh no, that, that's to quit the conversation, okay. Uh, Why did you leave the police? I was forced to retire. The golden handshake. Only in my case, it was more copper than gold. How come? I was made a scapegoat to cover up the department's inefficiencies. I don't know if it's me, but some of the dialogue audio seems very quiet at, like, certain lines. Have you ever heard of a Professor Oubier? No, monsieur. I don't recall the name. Well, apparently he's an expert on Mayan art and history. A little out of my field of experience, monsieur. If he'd been a serial killer or a sodomite, I might have been able to help. <laughs> Is that, is that the end of that, that conversation then? It's pretty cool that there's like recurrent characters and locations, so I'm a big fan of that. What do you make of this dart? Uh, I remember a case where the victim was killed with just such a device. The 
poison acted in seconds, causing his body to swell up like an inflatable life raft. That sounds hideous. What do you make of this news cutting? Of niche supplied fast food chain? No, it's the article above. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Total eclipse of the sun. Well, that's very dull in comparison. I don't know anything about eclipses. Okay. I feel like we should just exhaust dialogue options. That was a thing we should have done more in the first game, I think. Tell me what you make of this note. By years of experience, I gained a pretty good insight into handwriting. I'd say that note was written by a compulsive, obsessive type with an Oedipus complex. Wow. You know that just from handwriting? You got just about everything apart from the ponytail. <laughs> Oh god, can we take that? I couldn't snatch the man's flask while he was looking. Ah, but maybe we can distract him. Uh, so we can go into the cafe, or we can I go. No place to go except back to Ubier's house. Oh, okay. Besides, so... I didn't want to miss Lavano, so I decided to sit tight and wait. I was thinking maybe we could go back up to the cathedral, but that's just to leave the area. Oh god, the sewer. I had no desire to go down into the sewers. Hopefully, we don't have to go. No desire to go down into the sewers. Back down there again. That's all we need, isn't it? We've got all these things as well. Like I don't know what we're gonna do with the worm. It's a bit random. It's too it? hot to sit inside the cafe. Besides, I might miss Labino. Oh, okay. So it... the ex gendarme showed no effects from the wine he was pouring down his throat. Can we? Oh, we can talk to the waiter. Oh, garçon. He ignored me. I'm sure it was deliberate. What? That's a bit out of order. Oh, I wonder if we have to wait for him to come over and then, like, take the flask. Did he look up? The man was still looking. Oh. Does he look up at the waiter at any point? No. Okay. Can we say anything else to him? Oh, we can ask about the wine. What's that you're drinking? It's wine. Oh, is that literally the extent of the conversation? So he drinks the... Okay, he drinks the wine. And then... It was too hot to sit inside the cafe. I wonder if... The man was still looking. I wonder if we have to wait for him to actually drink it and then take it. I don't know why we need this flask, but the fact we can pick it up seems to suggest that we do. Can we... Hey, you. What? I'd like a cup of coffee, if you don't mind. When I finish serving this gentleman. Oi, I'm talking to you. <laughs> yeah, so he does... When he... I, I don't know if we've, like... Okay, no. Oh, wait, no. Maybe he's coming with our coffee now. Yeah, he is, okay. Well, that's... That's nice of him. Un cafe. Thanks. Uh, oh, we can talk to him. What does that guy keep pouring out of his flask? Absinthe. Absinthe? Wow. I thought that was highly dangerous and outlawed in France. It is. Don't look at me, I didn't sell it to him. That doesn't necessarily make it alright. Do you know a guy called André Lobino? Oui. I know him. What of it? Well, I'm supposed to meet him here. Did I miss him? No. I have not seen him today. Yeah, meeting people outside cafes in Paris didn't go well in the first game, so... Have you heard of Professor Oubier? Oui. He married that actress, the little Dachshund. They used to come here. The nutty professor and the movie star. Right. Uh, let's ask about... Well, Oubier's wife was a movie star. How come I never heard of her? She was big in France. The world doesn't stop at Hollywood. <laughs> her stage name was Carol Climax. She died. In suspicious circumstances. Really? That's interesting. How did Ubier's wife die? I heard he shot her. And got away with it? He had a good lawyer and they wrote a tight alibi. Huh. Why would an eminent public figure like Ubier risk everything for murder? He wouldn't be the first, would he? True. Besides, people like him always get off. Yeah, not always wrong there. Do you know that <coughs> man over there? I should think so. He's a regular customer. All right, the dart. Look at this, a poison dart. Now oh, we, oui. sure. No, it is. Trust me. It's the real thing. Knock my girlfriend out cold in a matter of seconds. Probably wouldn't say that to people. Sounds like a real close relationship you have going. <laughs> That's all. Thank you. Okay, bye. Ah, oh, here he is. 
So we just needed to order the coffee. Look at the face. Well, well, this is a surprise, Georgie. Things are about to get tense. I wouldn't normally call you. But Nico's in trouble, Andre. Deep trouble. You have to help me find her. What? What have you dragged her into this time? It was you that recommended Professor Ubier as an expert on Mayan art. Now his butler has kidnapped her. And he tried to kill me. Every time she gets involved with you, there is trouble. Walking out on her was the best thing you could do. My father was dying, damn it. I oh. had no choice. Wow. Well, she soon recovered once she went back to her old friends. Drop it, Andre. Right now, Nico's in danger. And we have to work together. Well, I guess we know why George well, went back. Nico needed to speak to Ubier about a stone. Oh, you mean this stone? <gasps> He's got it. Ooh. So that's what all the trouble's about. Precisely. Nico told me to guard it with my life. Oh, it's worth more than that, surely. <laughs> oh, very funny. <laughs> What's funny is that your life really is on the line. What are you talking about? The stone is a Mayan artifact, dummy. And the guy who kidnapped Nico was from Central America. It was the stone they were after. Oh my god. You mean I could be in danger too? Yep. Alright, well, let's ask some uh, questions, shall we? What do you suppose the carving on the stone means? I don't know. I haven't shown it to anyone. Why don't you just give it to me? I don't want your death on my conscience, Georges. That's nice of him, isn't it? Where did Nico get the stone? I'm not sure I should tell you. Oh, you should. It was something to do with smuggling. Oh. Alright. Why didn't Nico take the stone to Ubier? I don't know. Perhaps she suspected something like this would happen. If she's been hurt, Andre, I'll break every bone in your body. No, that's typical of you. <laughs> do you think I don't care what happens to Nico? It occurred to me that slugs don't have bones to break. But I kept that thought to myself. <laughs> He's got a really personal vendetta against this guy, and it's just... It's just too much, George. You need to chill, buddy. Tell me about your friend Ubier. He's more of a professional acquaintance than a friend. I see. So you don't really know him at all? No, I don't. Okay. Does Ubier employ a guy from Central America? Maybe. I don't know. Alright, what about this worm? What do you think this is, Andre? I don't know. I'll give you a clue. It's got more backbone than you. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, as, as sort of like up himself, um, Lobino is, George is a, an absolute prat, isn't he? What can you tell me about this pot? South or Central American, I'd say. I have a friend who'd be able to tell you more. Better not be Ubi, eh? Where can I find this guy? He owns a gallery on the left bank. The Glees Gallery. See you later. Goodbye, Georgie. Looks like we're going to the gallery. Meanwhile, several hundred kilometers away. That's my narration voice, by the way. Allow. Tell me what you've done with my stone. I thought your business was simply smuggling cocaine, Karzak. Why are you so interested in that stone? Either you tell me what I want to know, or Pablo here will make you talk. Okay. Well, I figured someone at the university would be able to help. So I had a word with one of my girlfriends, and she told me her boyfriend was a lecturer. I... I sent the stone to the Department of Ethnology. You know, I figured it was South American, so... You're not buying this, are you? That's enough! I don't have time to listen to your mindless prattle. We'll leave you to think it over. Come the morning, you'll be ready to talk. This guy's a jerk. Alright, well, I still feel like we need to get this flask. We can still talk to him. Being a gendarme? <sighs> yes, of course I do. <gasps> and I wore that uniform. I commanded the respect. Not anymore. Can we take it now? Yoink! Yes, we can. I grabbed the flask and was struck by a powerful smell of absinthe. A highly potent and illegal alcoholic drink. We've just stolen from a former cop. Excuse me. What? 
Didn't you try to appeal against your dismissal? There was no point. It was my word against that of the chief inspector. And he was a close friend of the director of the museum I was supposed to be patrolling. <sighs> kind of feel bad for him. Excuse me. Leave me alone. Well, that's the end of that conversation. All right, then, guys. Well, it looks like we're off to this um, gallery or whatever it was in the next episode. We'll leave it there for this one because we're out of time. I am really, really enjoying this. I'm loving going back to the old places from the other game. Um, it's great. I'm, I'm really enjoying it. I can't wait to play more. So, as always, thank you very much for watching. A big thank you to my patrons, Arcades Games, Wayne, Nate, Terminally Nerdy, Paul from the Phantom Fellows, Lyle, and Barry Aldridge for all the support on the channel. I really do appreciate it. If you enjoyed the video, hit that like button, and I'll see you all next time.